we've got another young lady coming up here that um, contacted me one day about something else, and then we I decided this her story was pretty compelling. We'd like to have her on the show. <laughs> well, um, Judah Myers is going to join us here in a moment. And, um, you know, one of the common things that we've heard it a million times when you start talking about our opposition to abortion, well, what about the woman that's raped? Mm-hmm. You know, we hear that uh, on a constant basis. And um, uh, it's almost like you're inhuman or you're, you're in, uncompassionate. You don't care anything about this woman if you won't let her kill her baby. Right. As if killing the baby will unrape the woman somehow. I, I'm not sure how that all works. But, and, and I've talked to plenty of women who've told me, you know, that, yeah, I had an abortion after a rape, and now I regret the abortion more than I regret the rape. Right. It was much more traumatic. Much more traumatic. And I'm living with it every night because I took violence that was inflicted upon me and then inflicted it upon the one person that God put on this earth for me to love the most, I inflicted it upon that person, which was my baby. Um, we've got somebody here. Uh, I want to welcome to the show, Judah Myers. Hello, Judah. Hi. I, you know, just listening to how you're describing that, man, just touches my heart. You get it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, you have a um, rape story to tell of your own. Uh, <laughs> very quickly, tell us, tell us what your situation is. My mother was raped by eight men when she was walking home from watching the Ten Commandments back in 1956. Mm. And I just found my mother three years ago and found out that she'd been praying for 48 years to meet me, that she'd told, told everybody about me, that um, she'd wanted to keep me, but her own mother wanted her to have an abortion. And so here I am today praising God and just so grateful that my mother became a hero um, instead of just throwing me away like... Um, so your mother became pregnant after being raped by eight men? Yes. And, and placed you for adoption? She did, yes. Right. Did your uh, parents know that you had been created through rape? They did not. Did they care once they found out? Um, well, my father <laughs> didn't care. He was alive. Um, he just died last year. But my mother had, uh, adopted mother had uh, died before I ever found my birth mother. So she never knew. But my dad basically um, got on the phone with my birth mother and just thanked her so much Mm -hmm. for giving him the joy to have a child of his own. Well, the reason I asked that question, I've confronted pro-aborts about this before. I've said, I remember a a debate I did in Dallas one time, and and this thing was coming up, and, you know, we were talking about, I said, "Are are you telling me that children created from rape are different than other children? I said, because look around this audience, it was at, it was at a college. I said, tell me which one of these children were created through rape and which one of them weren't. And, <laughs> what and I ask all the and time. should we kill the one right and now? should we kill the one right that now was that was created through rape? And the reason I ask you that question is, and I, of course, I obviously knew what the answer was before I asked it, but your father didn't suddenly look at you and say, oh, man, <laughs> I've loved this child all my life, and now I find out she was created through rape. She's, you know, I've, I've been deceived all these years, and she's not what I thought she was. Mm-hmm. Your father didn't do he that. He didn't do that. In fact, it was... He was even more grateful to my mother for having given birth to me. Because she went through a pretty traumatic ordeal. My goodness. Right. Um, And the stigma that goes along with um, even clouding my thoughts for a few hours that I was nothing worth living. And, you know, had it not been for Jesus Christ giving me my identity at that moment, I probably would have committed suicide for the lies that were floating around in my head. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that's the way Satan works. Yeah, yeah it is. And you're the good that came from a horrible situation. Right. And, you know, it's, I, I look at, I, I have an adopted daughter, of course, and um, I, I've, I've been in contact with many, many other people through the pro-life movement that have adopted children. Mm-hmm. And I've never met one of them who uh, said that had their child been created through rape, they wouldn't have wanted to, to adopt that child. You know, that, that child is tainted or it's, Right. It, it's less than human or less than the rest of the children. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you go into a, into, a, into a high school classroom and look around, and the chances are that there, are, there may be a child there that was created through it. I just want these pro-abortions to point that child out to me. Right. So how, do you, how do you know? Yeah. I, yeah. Mark, you, you know that I, that I was adopted as well, and I have a, a sister that was adopted two years after myself. And uh, about seven or eight years ago, she found her birth family. Her mother, her birth, uh, birth mother actually passed away, but she had seven other brothers and sisters other than me. And they told her that the reason that she was put up for adoption is because her mother was raped and she was pregnant. And they didn't know if this was her father's baby or half. As it turns out, uh, 
she doesn't look like the rest of the clan. And I asked my sister, you know, how does that make you feel? You know, I've been involved in the pro-life movement. She said, you know what, I am just glad to be here. I don't care who my dad was. I'm blessed to know you and my other family, and I feel like one of the most blessed people in the world. Right, right. Well, Judah, I tell you, you your, your, your thing has really moved. It's, it's moved us. Your mom really is your hero. She is. And, um, she really you know, is. And uh, Troy and I and you, we do uh, share one thing come. I was adopted, too. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and I was actually adopted by my mother's sister, but I know my natural mom. And um, I met my mom, and I love my mom. Um, but what, what your mother went through, I can understand why she's your hero. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's she what I tell people all the time. Instead of becoming a murderer that you can't live with for the rest of your life, be a hero. Everybody wants to be a hero. You make a mistake, or in this case, rape or incest, that's not caused by you. Be a hero. A hero is defined as saving a life. Who gave you your wow. name? Your birth mom? or My uh, adopted mother. And, and she didn't even know what she was doing because... They were Catholic, and they prayed to St. Jude, not really knowing that um, mm -hmm. the root, Judah, is, um, it means praise unto God. Mm. Wow. <laughs> but God has his purpose. Absolutely. Wow. Right. That's and awesome. you're here for a reason. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's just a, it's an amazing story. It really is. And I, I appreciate your, your being brave enough to come on here and talk about it. And people say that, but this, this not brave. It's like um, I'm compelled to tell people because there's somebody out there that needs to hear that yeah. so that a portion of society can live. And when I asked God if, if this really was him that created me, he said, if man were in control, then every woman who wanted to be pregnant would be pregnant. Right. But even the <laughs> test tube baby is not alive until God breathes into that that cell. Right. Is your birth mother still alive? My birth mother is, and, and please keep her in prayer. She's in um, the hospital right now. She just had surgery, and um, I can't find out what's wrong with her. I mean, I can't talk right. to the hospital because um, we have to have a password or something. Anyway, long story. Right. Just pray. Yeah. Well, we will. again, we thank you so much for coming on, and, and you know what? Okay, uh, you may, have a website? Yes, you do have a website, do I you not? Do. It's uh, www, we'll put it up on the screen, okay, judahforpraise.com. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've got a book coming out um, in about five weeks that deals with forgiveness for people who cannot forgive themselves or other right. people. Well, you know, Judah, I, I guarantee you I'm going to hear from somebody. It may not be next week or next month or sometime, but I'm going to hear from somebody who saw this and showed it to a girl who's been raped and changed her mind about abortion. I, I guarantee you, you've saved at least one baby here today. At Praise least God. one. Praise God. And I'd love to hear I'll the let story you know behind that. When it, when it happens, and it will happen, I'll, I'll certainly let you know. Oh, um, God bless you. But, but, you know, we've got to the point in this country where when women are raped and become pregnant, it is it's just assumed. Abortion is just like, right. uh, okay, now, you know, you've been raped and and now you're pregnant. Uh, we'll get the abortion scheduled, and then we'll, you know, get that taken care of. Then we'll sit down and start, you know, seeing how we can counsel you. It's just like it's the default position, right? right. And it's it's almost like I had a lady call me one day about that, and she said, when I got when she was right, she was married at the time. And she said I got pregnant, and everybody, my husband, my parents, his parents, the the doctor, well, obviously you're going to have an abortion, and she did. She said I just. She said, I thought, I'm the only one here. I must, there must be something wrong with me. I'm the only one here who's not really sure that this is what I want to do. But, so, but I must be wrong because everybody else is just saying it's, it's automatic. Mm -hmm. They it, deny the woman's half of the baby, and right. they just see this child as the demon seed of the rapist. Right. Yeah. And we've heard yeah. so long, well, how can I raise a baby that I was, I was raped by the dad? And that'll just remind me all the time. Right. Because that's been the default it. position. Yeah. Right. You can place that baby for adoption. Absolutely. And I guarantee you this, as an adopted parent, if you, when they hand you that baby, <laughs> I've been in that, in that lawyer's office. When they, hand, they put that baby in your hand, mm -hmm. you don't care. Matter. You don't yeah, care like, how that baby like was created. It, it doesn't matter. Well, again, thank you for being with us, Judah. God bless you. Thank you so much. And for all the babies that you're saving, 
that won't necessarily come and thank you. I'm going to play proxy. Well, <laughs> God bless you and thank you. So thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thanks, Judah. Bye-bye. Bye. We need a lot more amazing stories like that to get out in front of people. I can't handle that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're and you know what? The pro-boards can't either, and this is why we are winning this fight. Absolutely. The pro-boards have no stories not like Not only this. are we winning, we are going to win. Yes. Uh, we're not, that's not going to be turned around, and the pro-boards know it. I guarantee They're it. They're deathly afraid of people like Judah. Absolutely.